So, once upon a time, scientists believed that there was another planet in our solar system that was responsible for unusual behavior of Mercury. Today I'm going to explain to you what they actually thought was going on and why they believed in the existence of the so-called Vulcan, the hidden planet. Alright, let's talk about this. Welcome to What The Math. So first of all, let me actually help you visualize of what was happening and what these scientists believed was going on. So I need to start by introducing a concept of precession. This is not very easy to see here, so we're going to create a new simulation just so I can show you what's going on. Now, Mercury, uh, unlike other planets in our solar system, has a relatively eccentric orbit. In other words, and I'm going to make things a little bit more exaggerated here than they are in real life, but its orbit is a lot more elliptical, a lot more oval shaped than it is for other planets. And when it orbits, it basically goes around uh, like this. It's a little bit slower on this side and it's much faster here. Now, this is what happens when you have a star and a planet with elliptical orbit. Basically, that's kind of what you'll observe for the rest of the simulation. But if I actually place another object here, like for example, Earth, in a relatively circular orbit, you'll notice that there is something that starts happening to the orbit. It starts behaving a little bit differently. And I'm going to accelerate this a little bit just so you can see how it affects the orbit of this Mercury. Notice how it starts kind of pacing around and moving in a clockwise direction. It starts forming these petal-like shapes, almost like a flower. Now, this is actually an effect um, that Mercury does get in real life, and back in the days when we just discovered Mercury, and also for basically about 200 years, the Newtonian physics was able to calculate the precession of Mercury using the effects of other planets. But then the scientists realized, and this was actually in the beginning of 19th... This was actually in the beginning of 20th century, that there was actually something not adding up. As a matter of fact, Mercury seemed to have more precession than they were uh, calculating. In other words, it was moving faster or proceeding faster than it should. So it was advancing about 7 to 8% faster. And this really didn't make sense because 7 to 8% is a huge margin of error. And so they started speculating and they actually realized that something else was causing Mercury to acquire this extra precession velocity. Some people thought it was asteroids, some people thought there might have been actually some kind of an asteroid belt here, or a very large dust belt. But some people created this concept of Vulcan. The hidden planet on the opposite side of the Sun that we never actually get to see, but something that would be causing Mercury to change its precession. And I guess in some sense it totally made sense, but in another way if you think about it, this is way too complicated for an explanation. So pretty much for hundreds of years, we didn't really know how to explain this better. And so it kind of stayed as a mystery. Until Einstein. And this is actually where things really changed, because Einstein's theory, specifically general theory of relativity, was not just a major explanation for what's happening here, but as a matter of fact, the reason why it got adopted by pretty much every physicist was because it was able to explain what's actually happening here. Now, the math behind it is actually relatively complex, so I'm not going to go into that, uh, but I'm going to give you another visual explanation of what actually happens when you have an object that approaches another object that creates what's known as a space-time gravity well. And this is kind of what actually happens around the Sun, and it's a lot more visible in its effects on Mercury because Mercury approaches the Sun relatively close compared to other planets. Now, the simulation I was going to show you is actually something that has a black hole. And it's actually this object right here. Now, if I were to essentially just show you a regular orbit of an object that comes relatively close to a black hole, you'll realize that its orbit is totally unpredictable. Well, okay, it is predictable, but it's not what you expected. It's not just a circle or an oval. As you can see, depending on where the object starts from, and also depending on the amount of gravitational uh, interaction here, 
the orbit will be very interestingly shaped. And I can run this for a really long time, but it will never really be a circle. And this is because the gravity, or specifically the gravity well around the black hole, is so strong that even a typical circular orbit doesn't actually look circular anymore. So the precession that's being generated here by the actual gravity well is um, very, very, very high. But in the case of Mercury, it's much lower. But it's enough to actually always move the precession of Mercury by about 7 to 8% higher than it, than it would be otherwise. And so this unusual effect is actually explained by Einstein's theory and explains it so well that if Mercury didn't exist and if Einstein didn't try to calculate all of this using his theory, he would actually not even be that well known because his theory would never be adopted. From what the books tell us, when he learned that his theory was able to explain the precession of Mercury so precisely that it basically made no other sense, he was so overjoyed that he actually lost focus for the first time in his life. He didn't really know what to do. But this very interesting effect that uh, is created by the uh, gravitational field of the Sun is really what kind of helped us understand the universe a lot better. So in other words, Mercury, this beautiful crater world that we're about to visit with Beppe Colombo mission, is actually responsible for Einstein's theory adaptation. The reason Einstein became famous is really because of this beautiful planet. And because Einstein was able to explain all of the Mercury's unusual motions using his theory, we no longer needed Vulcan, we also no longer needed unusual asteroids or uh, dust belts in this region, and all of this suddenly made sense. So even though Newtonian physics, which is actually what we use here in Universe Sandbox as well, didn't really explain everything, Einsteinian physics, which unfortunately I don't think exists in any simulation I've tried, explains the rest of the universe really, really well. Now, that's kind of all I wanted to show you in this video. I wanted to explain to you how this beautiful planet that we don't really talk much about was actually responsible for pretty much spearheading the entire century of new discoveries in astrophysics. It was also responsible for, well, pretty much making Einstein really famous, but most importantly, we discovered a lot more other things, including, of course, black holes, because of this original discovery of why Mercury moves so funny. This was also, of course, the end of Newtonian physics, as we knew it, because it was just too simple to explain the rest of the universe. And even though, for the most part, Newtonian physics and, I guess, Keplerian orbital dynamics allow us to explain most of the motion in our solar system and, I guess, in some other star systems, when it comes to really detailed explanations for how things move and why they move so differently, especially when it comes to really massive objects, this is where Newtonian physics kind of fails. And so we do need to use very different theories, specifically those developed by Einstein. And this becomes especially true around black holes. Black holes really make things so different and so difficult for us that you can't really explain them with Newtonian physics anymore. And on that note, we're going to finish right here, escaping from a system that has a black hole and a very interesting star, about which we're going to talk in another video. Anyway, thank you for watching, subscribe if you still haven't, share this video with someone who loves learning about space, and maybe even support this channel on Patreon, because it does help me a lot. Space out, and as always, bye bye.